can truly say that I have been blessed. I can truly say that I've been blessed 
and because I've been blessed, I have a testimony. When I look back, Every once in a while, you need to look back. When I look back over my life, and I think things over, I realize that I've been blessed and truly blessed to give God some praise. He is worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Certainly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's go ahead and give God some praise. This is what we're here for today. Give God some praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so thankful for this first Sunday in November. The Lord has blessed us to be here. And when I woke up this morning, I had my mind on Jesus. I know that's a song we used to say, but when I, when I think about it, and I thought, you know what, Lord, I'm so thankful because I wasn't glad when I came into the house. I was glad when I woke up this morning. I don't know about you, but when I was able to see my way, when I was able to brush my teeth, I was already glad. When I was having my oatmeal this morning, I was already giving God the praise. When I sat down in the living room, I gave God praise. I was glad when he said unto me. Let us go. Let us go. Let us go. We're so thankful today and so blessed. Again, we give God praise for all of you. We give God praise for this fantastic Unity Choir. Give God praise for them again. Beautiful, beautiful. And our musicians. We want to welcome everyone, again, just a good morning. We want to welcome everyone to Oak Grove Baptist Church and our uh, in-person worship as well as our virtual worship. And we're going to ask if there's anybody in the sanctuary today, if this is your first time, maybe even second time, we want you to please stand. If you're here today and you're visiting Oak Grove, we want you to please stand right where you are. Are there any visitors today, anybody here today? for the first or maybe second time. Anybody here today? Amen, well, amen. Let's give God praise for this couple right here. Thank you so much for coming, and please come and see us again. We're so happy to have you here today. Well, it's a good day, and the Lord is blessing us right now. We do want to also welcome all of those that are part of our Facebook Live audience. And we're praying right now that this Facebook Live audience will think about someone today that need a word from God. If you don't mind, why don't you go ahead and share? Why don't you tag and let them know that we are having service. And more than service, we are asking God to speak to us today in a very, very special way. Go ahead and receive that right now. If you are a believer that God is going to speak in a very, very special way. Amen. Again, let's, I want to go ahead and recognize our, our veterans. All the veterans, please stand. Let's go ahead. And everybody, I know we're getting ready to thank just a minute, but give God praise for all of our veterans. We thank you for serving this country and also serving this society. Thank you so much. Last but not least, I want to, I'm so thankful that I have an opportunity to give out a certificate and she doesn't even know she's getting ready to receive it, but it's going to be a surprise and it's going to be a blessing. How about that? And that is, I would like to uh, give thanks to uh, Gloria Gibbons Crockett. <laughs> Gloria, would you please stand? Would you please stand, Gloria? I know you're, I know you're surprised. <laughs> but Gloria, Gloria uh, sang um, a song at the uh, the park. They were having a multicultural festival about two, three months ago, and she went up there and and sang, "Lift every voice and sing." And uh, and I'm glad that she was able to do that. So here's a certificate of appreciation. Uh, this certificate is presented to Gloria Gibbons Crockett for participating in the third annual Harrisburg Multicultural Festival on September 18th, and this certificate is awarded 
and signed by the mayor, um, act the mayor now, uh, Steve Chacha. All right. God bless you, my sister. And uh, you be blessed. You be blessed. Amen. 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 Well, I got one more award that I want to give you. That award is that, guess what? You are recognized by God today. Amen. How about that? So go ahead and give God a hallelujah and a shout and a praise. Brothers and sisters of the armed forces, when you hear your service theme song, will you please stand to be recognized? Well, tomorrow is National Purple Heart Day. It honors the service members who have been killed or seriously injured in the line of duty. Right now, there are 140 Purple Heart veterans living in the Charlotte area, and I had the honor of sitting down and speaking with a few of them. A whole lot of old folks getting together. <laughs> These Purple Heart veterans find comfort in each other. We know what each one of us went through. It has done so much for me, 
just them being there. They all served in Vietnam. Larry Rick in the 25th Infantry of the U.S. Army. Harold McGill in the 173rd. And Bobby McNeil was in the U.S. Marine Corps. All of them opening up about their time in service and receiving the Purple Heart. I was on a truck that exploded, hit a, hit a landmine, and I fractured my back. I was humbled by it because I didn't lose an arm or leg. I was wounded in the arm and the abdomen and uh, the leg and uh, considered myself fortunate. It took four months in the hospital in Japan, but I kept going. A plane dropped two 500-pound bombs, killed just about 110 people. And I got out of my foxhole and got down on my knees and prayed. I'm the luckiest person you could ever look at. These Purple Heart veterans, so humble. I wasn't there for the Purple Heart. I was there to serve the country. At first, I just felt like it was just a decoration. But over the years, I began to find out it's not just a decoration. It's somebody that has put their life on the line. Without the veterans, we wouldn't be here. We even was on the back of the veterans that served the country. How does that make you feel when someone comes up and tells you thank you? It makes you feel good that they take time out of their day to express their appreciation. But the reason I went to serve, I got more out of it than I gained. But it's all of us together. And if we can't come together and serve our country, then who are we going to serve? We, as Americans, have a duty to honor our country. We live in the greatest country in the world. It means so much to me just to be a part of it and to be able to serve and be able to call this my country. And we thank them for their service. They said, you know, they didn't really talk about what happened until about five, 10 years ago. So it was such an honor sitting down and speaking with them. Yeah, and because of their sacrifice, we're, we're all still enjoying our creature comforts and our day-to-day -day lives. And Most we can't forget definitely. that. We can't talk about it enough. Good morning, Oak Grove family and friends. We're so glad that you've connected with us, The Grove Without Walls, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. Franklin D. Watkins. If you are attending, listening, or watching us for the first time, we would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Whether you're watching us on Facebook Live, listening on the teleconference line, or attending in person, we would like to thank you for joining us. We appreciate each one of you. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience with us today. Now, it is time for our announcements. Please continue sending your prayer requests to the church office or to Minister McFarley. Here's what's happening at the Grove. Intercessory prayer meeting, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Christian Education, Session 9, Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can attend in person View it online via Facebook or Zoom, as well as dial in on the Zoom teleconference line. The church office will be closed on Thursday, November 11th, in observance of Veterans Day. On Saturday, intercessory prayer at 7 a.m. and Sunday school at 7 p.m. via teleconference. Bible verses for the Sunday school lesson are Revelation 11, verses 15 through 19. The Grief Share Fall Session is being held on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in classrooms 20 and 21. All sessions are in person. Grief Share is a Bible-based, Christ-centered ministry that helps people who are grieving the loss of a loved one to heal. You can register at griefshare.org. Use zip code 28075. A warm welcome awaits you at Grief Share. There will be a free seminar in the Peace Chapel on surviving the holidays on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Are you wondering how to get through the holidays after losing a loved one? Join us for this seminar to learn how to deal with the many emotions of what to do about tradition and surviving the social events. Register at griefshare.org. 
use zip code 28075. Registration is required for attendance. Contact Sister Delphine McIntyre at 704-455-8144 if you have any questions. Attention all Swagger youth, the STEP team is coming back. If you are interested in participating, please contact Reagan Ivy, Raheem Sands, any of our youth leaders, or call the church office. We would like to say thank you to all who have donated non-perishable food items for the Thanksgiving baskets. You still have an opportunity to be a blessing to a family in need. The deadline to bring your items is Sunday, November 14th. Thank you for your continued generosity. Our annual Men's Day service will be held on Sunday, November 21st during the 10 a.m. worship service. The attire is black suits, black shirts with red ties. For more information, you can contact Reverend Sheldon Davis or Minister James Alsop. In addition to Men's Day, men mark your calendars for the following dates. Men's Day rehearsal on Thursday, November 18th at 7 p.m. The virtual healthy breakfast on Saturday the 20th from 9 to 10 a.m. via Zoom, and rehearsal will take place at 1 p.m. The clapping events at University Meadows Elementary School, November 23rd and December 16th. The clapping events are opportunities for the Grove to partner with University Meadows to usher their students into school with a round of applause. These events will be held outside, and social distancing and mask guidelines will be in effect. Please wear the school colors, purple and teal, if possible, or bring a purple and teal balloon. All men must register in advance online as a CMS volunteer. The approval process takes three to four days. If you have any questions, please contact Reverend Sheldon Davis, Minister James Alsop, Deacon Jeff Mitchell, or Brothers Gene Davis or David Reynolds. It's that time again for us to be a blessing through our Angel Tree Ministry. Because of COVID-19 restrictions, the Angel Tree Ministry giving will be similar to last year. Monetary donations, cash or check, or gift cards such as Walmart, Target, Visa, or MasterCard will be accepted. Checks should be made payable to Oak Grove. Request forms are ready for pickup today and will need to be returned by November 17th. Angels can be picked up starting November 17th and will need to be returned to the church office by December 15th. There will be a multicultural student union fall kickoff in Caldwell Park on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Bring your family out for fun, free food, games, and prizes. Contact Reverend Ruth Brooks or Joanne Gresham for more information. This ends the announcements. Have a blessed, productive, and safe week. What a blessing it is to be here this Sunday morning. We want to uh, thank every veteran for your service. And it was just a wonderful tribute. And we want to thank all that received Purple Hearts, especially our own Brother McGill. It's offering time, so if we have everyone, if you will please stand and face the center aisle. After our prayer, we will uh, bring our offering up by sections. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning with grateful hearts. We come humbly submitting ourselves to you. We come thanking you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the financial blessing, the spiritual blessing, the physical blessings, Heavenly Father. We just cannot give you uh, any more praise, honor, and glory for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for those that are able to give uh, today, have given throughout the week, will continue to give for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will give the officers of, of Oak Grove Baptist Church the wisdom, the knowledge to be able to use these gifts, Heavenly Father, uh, 
for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Heavenly Father, and just bless the givers, bless the ones that are able to give and the ones that are not, knowing you know our hearts and you will truly bless us. It is in Jesus' name that we humbly pray. Amen. Okay, we will uh, bring our offerings in sections. We have four sections, section one, two, three, and four. If sections one and three will come from the rear, the, the uh, usher will let you know when you can leave uh, the rear pew and just come up. Remember to be socially distanced as you come. Sections one and sections three from the rear, please. Good morning, Oak Grove. Good morning, Oak Grove. Good morning to those here in the sanctuary. Good morning to those in Facebook land. Good morning to those on the teleconference. It is time for the word. Our scripture today is coming from the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, 25, 25th through the 31st verse. Again, that's Mark. Fifth chapter, 25th through the 31st, 34th, excuse me, verse will be coming from the New King James Version. 
give everybody a chance to find that in your books, your tablets, also in Facebook land. Again, that is Mark, the fifth chapter, 25th through the 34th verse, coming from the New King James Version, and it reads as such. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Last verse. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction." God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 Oh, Grove, I know God is good because I get an opportunity to look out over this beautiful crowd and see everyone dressed up and you guys look nice today if I have to say so myself. It's an honor and a privilege to be standing in front of all y'all beautiful people. Beautiful black people. And you know what? I absolutely love First Sundays. Communion Sunday to me is just a special Sunday. When you know that you got a God that will die for you no matter how good he dressed you up. Recognizing you are still a sinner saved by grace. But still, and I'm going to sin and I know it. But he knew that in the beginning and he still died for me. He still laid out his hands. He still allowed nails to go into his hands and be pierced in his side. And, you know, this is the day that we get to remember together, collectively, as a family, the sacrifice that he did for each and every one of us. So I love Communion Sunday. I love thinking about that sacrifice. I love the fact that I serve a God, not an image. A God that I can pray to and he hear my prayers and he answers my prayer. A God to when I'm grieving, he will comfort me. A God for when I'm feeling sad, he will lift my spirits. No matter where I am in life, no matter where I am on this earth or above this earth, because you know we can fly to space now, that he's with us no matter where we are. We can call on the name of Jesus even right now now in the house of God I dare you to call on the name of Jesus right now right now call on the name of Jesus right now don't you love the fact that he is omnipresent he's all over the place right now he's probably somewhere in Mars making sure that the heat's just right he could be on Saturn making sure that those rings are perfectly aligned but he's also when I raise my hand like this he said Mike Reese I see you too I see you too. I am just so happy this morning. Ah, it's, it's a blessing, guys, to just be here this morning with you guys. And I just woke up this morning in a good mood. And, and I woke up studying my word this morning. And I was like, Lord, what is it that you would have me to say? Allow me to be an instrument for you, Lord. You know, and, I, and, and the enthusiasm and the excitement that I have because God gave it to me. This earth didn't give me nothing. God gave me everything that I have, and I appreciate it for it. This morning, I'm here to do the pastoral prayer. 
So I'm going to ask everyone to do me a favor to bow your heads, close your eyes. Think of all the goodness that God has done. You know, the choir sung a song earlier today that says, I will never forget. I can't forget. I can't forget those moments when I was a little kid and God bought me out of so much stuff that I got myself into. I can't forget that when I was in college and I didn't know how I was going to pay for it, but God bought me out of that as well. I can't forget when I was in my 20s and I started having kids and my biggest worry was, Lord, are you going to allow me to be able to take care of my family? But he did. I can't forget how good he's been to me in the past. And here I stand in front of all you guys, almost 50 years old, able to think back of his goodness and his grace and say, God, I thank you right now. God, I lift you up right now. God, I give you honor and glory right now. Not just me, but every sound, every person who can hear my voice. Lord, we lift you up together collectively, dear God, right now. Father, we lift up our sick and our shut-in right now, knowing that you are still healing, dear God, knowing that even right now you are mending wounds and you are closing things, Heavenly Father, that shouldn't be opened, or, dear Lord, that you are touching folks right now moving them past their situation, dear God. God, so often we put our problems before you. <laughs> so often we put our situations before you. But God, today that ends. This communion Sunday today, that ends. On this day, dear God, when we think about your goodness, your grace, and how you sacrifice your life, your perfect life for us. No, dear God, so we know that you are still in the healing business. Father God, this morning we want to thank you for the Reverend Dr. Franklin Watkins, the other shepherd that you placed in this house, dear, dear, dear God, to minister to your flock, dear Jesus. We thank you. Dear Lord, we know that throughout this week you poured into his life, dear Heavenly Father. Throughout his life, you poured into it just to get ready for this moment. This moment, dear Heavenly Father, I can't wait until he bring the word. This word he's been waiting his whole life to give, dear God. And I can't wait to hear what you have placed on his heart, dear God. Now, Lord, when we hear your word, when it's been put out there, and it's our turn to go forth beyond these walls and take your word, dear God. Lord, allow us to stand up and be good stewards, Heavenly Father. Allow us to spread your word, dear God. Lord, there's so much negativity going on in this world today, dear Heavenly Father. But Lord, you are the lamp. Hallelujah. That holds the sun in place. You are the light of this world. You direct our path. So this morning, God, we humbly... Yes, Lord, we humbly bow down to you. We close our eyes so that there's no distractions because, Lord, we want to give you all of our attention. Lord, thank you right now, dear Heavenly Father, for the blessed. <laughs> Those that know that they're blessed, dear Heavenly Father. Those that don't count it, Heavenly Father, as you know, but Lord, those folks, Heavenly Father, who said, Lord, I am blessed because of you. I know this morning, God, when I woke up, it wasn't because of my own strength. I know this morning, dear Heavenly Father, when I woke up and realized that I got to pay my bills next week, dear God, even if the money is not there, God, I'm going to praise you anyway, dear God. I'm going to stand on your word, dear God. God, thank you right now. Touch and bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. Like only you can. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.
Oh, yeah. 
worthy Jesus Christ our Lord come let us adore him come let us say hallelujah to his name for he is worthy he is worthy our great king and our great Lord 
He's worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor, and worthy of all the praise. Go ahead and give Jesus one more wave, praise, wave of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so thankful to be in the house of the Lord once again. Certainly the Lord has blessed us in this place, in this house of worship. We want to thank God again for all of those that are here today. If you're here again uh, in person or if you're here through Facebook Live, we want to say God bless you. We want to give God praise for our ushers and our greeters. Amen. Amen. Give we want to give God praise for our sound crew. Amen. Amen. And we want to give God praise for this fantastic choir. Go ahead and give God praise. It's and our musicians. So many reasons that we can give God praise. We also want to give God praise for his word. And his word today is coming out of the book of Luke. That's the New Testament. Luke chapter 17 and starting in verse number one. That's Luke, the gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke chapter 17, and we'll be looking at verse number 1 through 6 in the New King James Version. We're waiting on Facebook, we're waiting on a teleconference to get your Bibles out. You want to keep your Bible open because we will reference these scriptures. This is what the Lord says in Luke chapter 17 and verse number 1. Then he said to his disciples, It is is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, that they be that 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 and then that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins again you against you seven times in a day, seven times in a day, return to you and say, I repent, you shall forgive him. And then the apostle, the disciple said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The apostles, the disciples said to the Lord, increase our faith. We're going to put a tag on this message today that simply says, faith that makes Jesus smile. Faith that makes Jesus smile. One more time, faith that makes Jesus smile. Would you bow your heads with me? God, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you. We recognize that this is another beautiful day that you have made. And now, God, we're here gathered at this place of worship, and we need a word from you. No other word will do. Hide this, your preacher, behind your cross. God, you be elevated. You be magnified. That's who you are. Let me be seated. Work now, God, through your Holy Spirit, and we will forever give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name that we pray. Let all the saints of God say amen. In Luke 17, we see Jesus teaching his disciples how to live as spiritual beings in this physical world. Jesus spent a lot of time teaching his disciples how to live as spiritually strong people in a world where calamity and destruction and chaos were all around. Jesus taught his disciples how to live as Christians, being Christ-like, even when enemies and haters 
and foes and even frenemies came to eat of their flesh. And just like these disciples, Jesus desires to teach us the same thing. Jesus came to teach us how to live as spiritual beings in a natural and a physical world. He came to teach us how to live as spiritual people in a world that is full of calamity and destruction and violence and sickness and disease. Jesus came to teach us how to live as successful Christians even when our enemies and our haters and our foes and our frenemies come to eat of our flesh. Somebody may say, you know what, I'm going to let you know, if you're not being taught by Jesus, then you're being taught by default by the world. If you're not being taught by Jesus, then you're being taught by default by the thief. This is what Jesus said, the thief cometh, but to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. If you look around your environment and all you see, things that are being taken from you or you're seeing stealing, killing, and destroy. But this is what the, the word says, but Jesus came. Anybody go ahead and give God praise right now. Jesus came. He says that, I, that we may have what? Life. Not only life, but life more abundantly. And Jesus wants, uh, preacher, what, what are some of the things that Jesus taught his disciples? Well, I'm glad you asked, but there's a lot that Jesus taught. But let me just, just hit a couple of things. Matthew 4, 17, Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 19 says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He wants to make us fishers of men because why? The kingdom of God is at hand. In Matthew 6, 5, he says, when you pray, you shall not be like hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Most assuredly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet, get into your bosom and shut the door and pray to Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in you in secret, he will reward you openly. What did he teach his disciples? He said, uh, Jesus said, you have heard that it is said you shall love your neighbors but hate your enemies. But now I tell you to love your enemies and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. And I believe the disciples thought about that. They say, wow, there's so much to know and do if you're going to be a spiritually strong people, a person of God. Anybody here feel that same way with the disciples? There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to do in order to be a spiritually strong uh, person of God. But Jesus goes on in Luke number 17. He says, and Jesus still begins to teach his disciples of how to live a spiritual being in this physical world. What did Jesus tell them? He says in verse number one in Luke 17, things that cause people to sin are bound to come up, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown in the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. What Jesus was trying to tell somebody, do not cause anybody to go astray because of your foolishness. Somebody, somebody help me here today. And he said, and be careful and extra careful. Don't you mess with my children now. He said, don't, don't, don't abuse them, don't, don't lead them astray, don't, uh, don't, don't cause any harm to come upon them. Don't try to tell them stuff that ain't even in the Bible. Don't tell them that you got to figure out what their genity. No, God already made your genity. You are, he already made you a male or female. I know I can't get no help in the house, but the truth is a light. I wish I had some help here today. And I'm pleased to sure the disciples said, man, this is a hard word. Uh, how can we learn to do and be spiritually strong people? But Jesus continued teaching. He went in verse number three. He says, take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, repent, re uh, rebuke him. And if he repents, guess what? Forgive him. He says, if you sin against, if he sins against you seven times a day, seven times in a day and return to you and say, I, re I repent, he said, you shall, what? Forgive him. 
In other words, Jesus is teaching us today, you cannot live spiritually successful people on this earth without practicing the lifestyle of forgiveness. To be clear, forgiveness is not just a one-time thing. Can I get some help here today? But it is a reoccurring thing. If you're going to live in peace here on this earth and be spiritually successful people, we must learn how to practice, somebody say practice, practice forgiveness. See, in this world, there are some givens. Can I get some help? In the world, uh, there are going to be some people who will offend you, not one time, but again and again. People will talk about you, not one time, but again and again. People will mistreat you, what? Again and again. People will lie to you again and again. People will sin against you again and again. And not only will people sin against you, but can I help somebody? You will sin against them. It ain't, it's just not a one-way street because sin is like a door on hinges. It swings in and out. It swings to and fro. And you will offend somebody and say, I ain't going to do it again, but you'll do it again. I guess it has some witnesses. You'll talk about somebody. You say, I know that wasn't right. And then what you'll you end up doing it again. You'll mistreat somebody. And you say, I thought I wasn't going to do that, but you will end up doing it again. You You've lied on people and you've sinned against others. And guess what you did? You did it again. Can I tell somebody that all of us are referenced in the Bible? I wish I had some help in the house. God has referenced all of us. There's a name, and that might not be your name, but he got all of us in the Bible. Preacher, can you show me where God has all of us in the Bible? Well, he says in Romans 3.23, for all. Have mercy, have mercy for, for all have what? Sin and come short of the glory of God. And John comes back and he says, and if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And we confess our sins. He's what? Faithful to, and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from, from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. I'm so glad today that I don't mind standing up and say, Lord, I I need you because I want your word in me and I'm not trying to say I'm all that in a bunch of chips. No, I'm, I need you, Lord. And, and I thank God that right here, I believe that I know what he's talking about. And brothers and sisters, I, I was writing this text and I thought, well, you know what? We're just like Isaiah. Anybody glad to be in the church today? Isaiah was happy. He went to the church and I was excited about coming to the church. And he said, we went to the, he got to the church in Isaiah in verse number six. And he says, it was a day Urziah died. And he said, I saw the Lord. Amen. Anybody ever seen the Lord? He said, I saw the Lord and he was high and he was lifted up and his train filled the temple. Man, it was so powerful in there. There was so much Holy Ghost spirit in there. You couldn't really stand it. But then he said that, I, I like what he says then, but he says, uh, but he looked and he said, I said, woe is me. Y'all see that right there? He says, woe is me. He said, because I am, uh, I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell what, in the midst of people with unclean lips. Anybody in the house today can go ahead and say with Isaiah, uh, we're living in a deprived world. We're living among people who have unclean lips and unclean hands and unclean feet and unclean fingers an unclean mouth. I can't get no help here. Amen. But we're living here, but I need somebody to know if you don't learn to forgive, you're going to hold the look. You will not have the peace of God working on the inside of you. There's something that God has given us to control. You got to know how to let it go. I can't get no help here. You got to know how to let it go and let God do what he is, what he's going to do. And I'm so thankful here. I, I, I don't know about you, but I want every amount of love. I want every amount of peace God wants to give me. I ain't trying to, I'm not going to block my blessing because I can't say I'm sorry or I can't, I can't forgive somebody. I ain't going to block my blessing but because I, I need, I don't know about you, but I need every amount of peace. Anybody in the house, I need all the grace. I need all the love of God that you can give. Now, can I say this, but I know we just talked about, we, we just recognized uh, Na National Domestic Violence Day in, uh, in October. And, and when I say forgiving, uh, now forgiving a person does not mean you must put your, yourself back in harm's way. Can I get some help? Because if, 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 the, if he really loved you, he wouldn't be kicking you. 
if he really loved you, he wouldn't be slapping you. He wouldn't be slapping. He wouldn't, he wouldn't put, or if, if she really loved you, she wouldn't be trying to mess you up. I can't get no help here today. Amen. I think sometimes what happens, it does not, it, 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 it does not mean you, you continue to let a person abuse you. That's not the kind of forgiveness I'm talking about. It's not, you, you don't allow people to get back in the presence and beat you or slap you. See, uh, some people, you got to learn how to forgive from a distance. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I forgive you, but I'm telling you, you can't live with me. I, I, I forgive you, but I can't hang out with you. I forgive you, but I can't, I, I can't refuse to put myself in danger. Because the thing that we have to understand when we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness work in love. See, sometimes people will take one scripture and they run with it, but you got to understand that God says forgive you, forgiveness, but he also teaches us how to love. Can I, can I tell you what he says here in Luke 10, 20, 27? He says, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all, and love your neighbor as yourself. Can I roll this back one more time? If you don't love yourself, amen, lights, amen. Well, if you don't love yourself for nothing, say, I ain't going to let myself get beat down. Uh, I'm not a mat for somebody. If you don't love yourself and understand that you are wonderfully made, I ain't going to let nobody just slap me around and do whatever. Now, if you don't love yourself, you ain't going to ever know how to love your neighbor. If you don't love yourself, you don't know how to love God because he said it's all tied together. Praise God, praise God. So he talks about forgiveness, and I'm only the disciples thought, man, this is a hard, again, word. It's hard to be a spiritually strong person of God. I said all that to get to this point in the text. And so the apostles said to the Lord, increase my faith. And I wonder why did this come up after talking about all these different things? Uh, why did they ask, Lord, increase our faith. Why did they ask this question? They thought, I think maybe they thought about all the expectations that God had to be a Christian. Maybe they believed and they thought about all that it means to live like Christ. They thought about what it meant to, 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 uh, to, to be the, 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 the Christian that they were supposed to do. And then they thought about their lives and they found out that they were far from where God wanted them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They were, they were away. They had, they had fallen away. They had fallen short. And they began to think about, oh man, woe is me because I said some things I should not have said. I went some places I should not have gone. I, you know, I treated somebody the way I should not have treated them. And the disciples thought about how far away they were from the mind of Christ. I need to come on. I'm not talking just about the disciples. Anybody in the house here today can say preacher I know who you're talking to because there's a time when I'm trying to keep my mind stayed on Jesus I'm trying to do what God has called me to do I'm trying to keep my cool on the job when people are trying to press my button but every once in a while I understand and I'm far away because I let it go sometimes but then the word comes back and say no let this mind be in you that was what also in Christ Jesus and he checks you. You got to stop and step. You got to stop sometimes and say, Lord, you just checked me. The disciples thought about how far away they were from the identity of Christ. You know, Jesus had been telling them who they were. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I, I feel like I'm far away from where God has really called me to be. And I get into an identity that is not like God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I get into an identity of, oh, woe is me. I'm a loser. I can't do nothing right. I, 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 it's just everything don't ever work out. But you know what? You have to understand that God will come and tell you, about stop that kind of thinking because you got to understand there's an identity that God has placed on you because when you said yes to the Lord you understood then that God said now they who are led by the spirit of God you are now my children you are now my sons and daughters and he said not only that but you're an heir I can't get no help somebody somebody get up and just just go ahead and get your chest out I'm more than what you think I am because I'm an heir of Jesus Christ uh, I'm the one he said you are chosen generation you you are the royal priesthood. Uh, you are wonderfully made. And, and so you ought to church switch it around. The disciples felt that they needed some help to measure up. And they knew something they needed help. 
And so, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I need some help. I need some help to get my ideas in line with Christ. I need help to get my support of my mind in the right place. And my, uh, I need some help getting some assistance in my identity. And I'm glad the disciples asked, Lord, increase our faith. Anybody been crying out today, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith so that I can live better. Increase my faith so I can walk in my healing. Increase my faith so I can walk in deliverance. Increase my faith because, God, I really got this house in mind. I got this car. I got this promotion in mind. But look at the response of the Lord God, Jesus. They asked for an increase of faith, but how did Jesus come back at them? He says in verse number six, so the Lord says, if you have faith as a mustard seed. Wait a minute. I just missed something here. Because I'm talking about, Lord, make my faith large. And he's talking about something small. Now, I must have missed. I don't know about you, but has anybody ever seen a mustard seed? A mustard seed looks like it's a grain of sand. It's a small thing. But the, So the disciples said, increase our faith. But God said, all you need is real faith. I can't get no help here today. I need somebody to hear what the Lord is saying to us. In the words, the Lord said, you don't need increase of faith. You need real faith. Real and genuine faith is what you need. That was, uh, the emphasis is not on the quantity. And that, that's just like us because we always think if we have a little bit more, that, that means that there's a blessing. No, you can have a more and still be miserable. But he said, I believe you're trying to tell us today, said, but it's the quality, it's not the quantity. I need some help here today. I need somebody to go ahead and say hallelujah in the name of the Lord. It's not the quantity, but it's the quality. How much do you really believe God? That's what he's asking us today. And so the disciples, for the disciples, it is not a matter of increase of faith, but it's a matter of possessing real faith. The very small amount of real faith, faith the size of mustard seed, you can do the impossible. And I believe that Jesus is saying to us, it's not a matter of more faith, but real faith. Not a matter of increased faith, but genuine faith. Not a matter of plenty of faith, but it's a matter of true faith. And when you have this real and genuine faith as a mustard seed, then you got some real stuff. You got the real thing. You got, because if you have the faith of the mustard seed, you understand that that faith might be small, but guess what? It's potent. It might be small, but guess what? It's full of plentiful potential. It might be small, but it's powerful. As a matter of fact, you drop it in the right soil. And you'll see that mustard seed come up and it'll be bigger than some trees. Can somebody say, somebody go ahead and say praise the Lord right there. So he's trying to tell us right here. He says, uh, so, so when, you, when you have this kind of faith, you can say to the mulberry tree, be pulled out of the root and be a cast into the sea. And then I thought about it and I say, Lord, and I understand the mulberry tree and I don't, know, I don't know if anybody here, it won't help me if I move the mulberry tree. That won't help me. I'm sorry. And then I thought about uh, Matthew 21 and 20, 21 and said, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, if, your faith, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall, you shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but you'll say to the mountain. Everybody remember that? Uh, be, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Anyway, what Jesus just did, he just flipped his uh, over into uh, talking some sy symbolic language. He's giving a, a figurative language. He's giving uh, 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 something that is a metaphor. But here's the real reality is that we don't need trees to move. We don't need mountains to move. But anybody got any big problems here today? Any, anybody got any big issues? Anybody got any obstacles? It, it could be a sickness. It could be a disease. It could be a relationship problem. It could be a marriage problem. It could be a drug problem. It could be an emotional problem. It could be a mental problem. However, if you have real faith, I wish I had some help here today. If you have some genuine faith, then uh, you'll be able to say beyond a shadow of doubt that God can do it. God can heal. God can deliver. God can make a way. But then you got to go a little bit higher. Not only can he do it, but God will make a way. God shall make a way. God can heal. God can deliver. We got to get to the point where we have real faith. Because 
when you have real faith, high quality faith, it shows up in your thinking. It shows up in your thinking because, for example, you know, yeah, if you're sick and you uh, uh, and, and real faith, real faith shows up when you're sick and it lays claims on your healing. And let me tell you what real faith shows up in your thinking and it claims it, it, it claims your healing even before you go to the doctor. Oh, let me roll this back. He, you know, real faith, what it does, it claims your healing before you take your pill. <laughs> yeah, real faith, it, it already makes up his mind because, see, real faith is based on what? The word of God. It's not based on anything of this earth, but real faith, you hang your hat on what? The word of God. If you want to have a place where you hang your hat when it comes down to healing, I recommend Matthew 4.23. Matthew 4.23 says, and Jesus went uh, uh, to Galilee and teaching, and he was preaching, and he says, and then they brought to them all these people, and he said, and healed all. Wait a minute, Jesus, did you really mean that? Don't you, don't you mean that you've healed some people? He said there in Matthew, and this is what, this is what I need to hang my faith on, Matthew 4, 23. He says, I healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And so when you begin to uh, think about your faith, your thinking has to change. And you got to be able to say, no, I believe it's going to happen because I believe Jesus, when he went to Galilee, he could come right into Oak Road Baptist Church right now. He could come down to the the second row and the third row he can touch me right now and he can say all oh, anybody in the house anybody ought to go ahead and give God praise because all can be delivered all can be set free so example when you have real faith it shows up in your talk see what I love about this is that sometimes we can fake it some people say fake it till you make it sometimes you can't fake You got to think it and it got to come out in your mouth. And that's our problem right there because, yeah, we have some, you have some problems. Yeah, I know your back is hurting because you told me that last week. I know you got a knee problem. I know you got a neck problem. But you shouldn't tell everybody every time you see them how bad you feel. You, you don't mess yourself up because you're giving power, what, to your problem. <laughs> Your marriage might be hanging on by a thread, but you should not tell all your co-workers that you got a no good husband and no good wife. Your bank account might be, uh, you might not have much in your bank account and your, your pocketbook might be empty, but you shouldn't be talking about, I don't have to, but two nickels. You get crazy. You, you got two dimes. What are you talking about? That's, that's craziness. Listen, you don't tell, you don't start talking about what you don't have because when you start talking about what you don't have, you're giving, you're giving power to what you would never ever have. But anybody in the house ought to go ahead and flip that around. Because real faith shows up in your mouth. And real faith shows up in your mouth. You can activate that faith by talking about what God says. Don't, don't tell me about what your friend said. Don't tell me about what your neighbor said. I need a word from the Lord because when I have a word from the Lord, I can understand that I've got a God because my God shall <laughs> supply. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know what you're thinking about, but my God. Anybody go ahead and give God praise for your God. My, my God shall. I oh, can't get no help. I need somebody in the house to go ahead and pray. He said, I'll do it right now. Why? Because my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches. You see, we just like the disciples. Our first thoughts are always human, fleshly, and natural. But Jesus' thoughts are always divine, spiritual, and supernatural. That's why I titled this sermon, A Faith That Makes Jesus Smile. See, I'm tired of talking about faith that increased my faith. I want faith like a mustard seed. I don't know what that means. I want faith that's, I want, give me great faith. No, I, at the end of the day, here's what I want. I want faith. Oh, y'all need to hear what I'm saying today. That makes Jesus smile. 
Because when faith makes Jesus smile and it's in you, ain't no way you can go around looking ugly and looking like you ain't got nobody that can help you. How can you say, I need faith that will make Jesus smile on the inside of me before I go and try to witness to anybody? Don't you go witnessing to anybody and you got hate all over you? No, I need faith that what makes Jesus smile. And when he makes Jesus smile on the inside, then I can go to my house. And when I'm in my house, I want faith that would make Jesus smile. I ain't going to be going in the house talking about what ain't working and what you ain't doing and how you're not cooking, or how you're not cleaning, or how you know, all of this stuff. No, I, need, I can't get no help in the house. And when I get faith that makes Jesus smile, I can go to my workplace, no matter how bad things are, no matter what they say, they're getting ready to give us pink slip. I ain't going to worry about about it because I got faith Lord give us faith that would make you smile not me but you and so here's my definition of faith I like what Hebrews says faith Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Can I give you a simple definition of what faith is? Faith is believing in God. Believing in his word. Believing in his principles. Believing in his values. So much that I get excited about changing. I can't get no help. See, it ain't about, see, people, people come to God and say, well, it's so many to do. You can't do this. You can't do that. You don't miss it. Because when you understand that what faith really is, is believing God for what he said. God said it because he is the great and the mighty one. I, 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 God has values. God has principles. And I get excited when the Lord allows me to change my thoughts to his thoughts. I get excited when it allows me. I'm going to change my actions. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to change my behavior because that is what faith is. If you can't do what God has called you to do, I'm going to tell you, brother, you need to have faith that will make Jesus smile. And so, let me hurry on. And so here it is. I want to give you three points. I'm done. And these three points are short. If you're going to make Jesus smile, real faith is believing in the love of Jesus. Believing in the love. Somebody say in the love. God has given us a way to get right with him. He's given us a way to have life and have it more abundantly. He's given us a way that we can be free from condemnation. Can I show you what the way, where the way is? The way is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should what? Not perish but have everlasting life. So real faith is believing in the love of God and the love of Jesus. Can I break this down just a little bit? John 3, 16 did not say God so loved the black folks. He didn't say I love the white folks. He didn't say I love my crew and my crew only. He didn't say I just love the brown people. He didn't say I just love the rich people. He didn't say I just love poor people. He didn't say I just love church people. He didn't say I love right people. He didn't say I just love the Christian, but God so loved the what? World. Can I, can I break it down here? If you are in the world today and you might not feel like you have a friend anywhere, this cruel old world, I got a word for you. God loves you. If you're living in sin right now, you may be speaking to me and that lady that's sitting uh, laying right next to you, she ain't your wife. And that, that, that man that's living right, laying right next to you, he ain't your husband. And then that man, that other person that laying, he is your same gender. I need you to know God loves you. Oh, I can't get no help. Here's what I'm trying to say. See, what we don't understand is that God loves you just as much right now. He's going to love you. He's loving you the most that he can love you right now because he loved the world. I wish I had some help here today because we get it twisted sometimes. But I need you to know God loves you if you're in prison. 
If you've stolen something, if you have committed adultery, if you have, uh, if you have abused a child, if you have robbed somebody, if you have uh, uh, done some craziness, sold some drugs, God loves you. I wish I had somebody go ahead and say, God loves you. He loves you, and God loves you whether you at the lowest low or he loves you. Even if you're suicidal, somebody say, God loves me. But here's the thing that I like about that. No matter what you are spiritually, no matter where you are uh, uh, mentally, no matter where you are materially, it doesn't matter because God loves you with a great love right now, right where you are. Can I get some amens in the house? However, real love, somebody say real love. love. Real love will not leave you in your low state. Real love will not leave you in your mental breakdown. Real, real love will not leave you in your physical and your spiritual sickness. As a matter of fact, real love must act on your behalf to make life better. I wish I can say that. Can I say that one more time? Real love will not leave you in the state that you're in. Now, he may find you in a state, but he ain't going to leave you there because he's got work to do. Somebody say, God's got work to do. He's got, a, he's got work to do right now on me. And the story is told about a man who fell in a pit. The man fell in the pit. And the man fell in the pit and couldn't get anybody to help him out. The psychologist came by and said, you only think you're in the pit. The Pharisees came by and said, only bad people fall in the pit. The fundamentalists came by and said, you deserve the pit. The missionaries came by and they said, here's some food and some clothing in the pit. The cabinets came by and they said, you know what? Ain't no accident you in that pit. The optimists came by and said, things will get better in the pit. The pessimists came by and said, things going to get worse in the pit. But somebody said, Jesus came by. And when Jesus came by, he got in the pit with the man. He got in the pit with the man and he says, I came in the pit so I can raise you up. Oh, I can't get no help. See, I'm talking about myself. See, when God found me, I wasn't all cleaned up, but he found me in the pit. But he didn't leave me in the pit. But he came in the pit with me. He came into my situation. He'll, I know he'll come into your situation. He'll come wherever you are because what the Lord says, I love you. I love you so much and I'm coming into your darkness. I'm coming into your pain. And if you let me, I'll raise you up. Anybody need to be raised up? I'm just about done. He'll raise you up. Somebody say he raised you up. And that's what it says that God so loved the world that he gave, he, he, uh, gave his only son. But here's the thing. When God is, is in the pit with you, you got to have enough sense to say, I'm ready to make a change. Because God can be right there with you unless you recognize that he's with you. He says, listen, I can make a change. I didn't come to live where you are. I came for you to live where I am. So I'm going to raise you up if you let me, let me. And so somebody ought to make a decision today and say, Lord, I've been in the wrong place too long. I, I've been in the wrong relationships too long. I, I've been in the wrong mind of thinking too long. But today, I wish I had some help. Go ahead and confess it if you know it. Today, it's going to be a change. Today, I'm going to let Jesus come in. I'm going to let him clean me up. And then when he cleans me up, I know I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be better than fine. To make Jesus smile, you must know that real faith is believing in the provisions of Jesus. Just a few words to this, the provision of Jesus, this is real faith, because I know we are in a time of a pandemic, and I want you to know, brothers and sisters, I know we, get, we come to, the, to church and we ask the Lord to give us some hope, but we may be in this situation for a little bit longer. It's not just a pandemic now, but it's, they're talking about the plot supply. They're going to be, there's going to be something happening, and I, you know, how long is the supply gonna, this, this product supply lack is going to happen? How long is it going to be that they can't get stuff on the shelves? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you right now, my faith is stronger than that. 
Can I get some help here today? Because my faith is a faith that makes Jesus smile. So I've already hung my hat on this text of Matthew 6.30. I ain't got to worry about when I'm going to eat. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to live. I don't have to worry about uh, uh, what I'm going to wear because he says, now if God so clothed the grass on the field, anybody else look at the grass? He said, if, if he can put a flower on the lily, I can't get no help here, but he said, if he can put that on uh, the flowers that's going to be gone tomorrow. He said, then why he said, oh, you of little faith. That's what he said. Therefore, do not worry what you will eat, huh? what you will drink, or what you will wear. That's what the people who don't have faith do. But if, I don't know about you, but for me in my house, for me and the people who hang around with me, he says, first, I'm going to seek the kingdom of God. First, I'm going to look. I'm going to get on my, in my knees. First, I'm going to read your word. Before I have a heart attack about what they're talking about on CNN, first, I'm going to hear what God has to say. If I can't get no bread that's all right because God's got some bread uh, stored up for me uh, can I go ahead and tell you as I close this out and so not only did he say I'll, yeah, I want to I want Jesus to uh, I want the smile that would make Jesus happy and uh, happy but the other thing is that real faith is believing in the power of Jesus I'm done now it's it's believing in the power somebody say in the power so I said that you had to believe in the love you got to believe in the provision but anybody here want to believe in the power? And here's how the power works. You won't figure it out. It won't look right. You, don't, you won't even know how it's possible. But don't you worry about it. Just go ahead and get you some sleep. Yeah, it may, it may look crazy. It may, it, uh, it, may, it may look ugly. It may look crazy. All these people jumping around talking about how they're going to fix this. Yeah, all this. You know what? God's going to fix this. But how is he going to do it? Well, that's God's business. I... I don't know, but I can tell you, I know he's going to fix it. Well, preacher, how do you know that he's going to fix it? Well, I got a testimony from a, 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 a certain woman. And this woman, she had been sick for 12 long years. They said she had a blood issue. She had an issue of blood. Can you see this lady had an issue of blood and she was hemorrhaging? And whenever anybody knows anything about hemorrhaging, that will make you weak. But, but then I like what the, what the text says, uh, because I believe the Lord that this woman decided, I want faith uh, that will make Jesus smile. And they said that she heard that Jesus was coming through. Oh, I need some witnesses in the house. I'm, getting, I'm closing right now. Uh, she heard uh, that Jesus was coming through. Uh, and she said, I know I'm weak, uh, but if I can gather up enough strength, uh, I'm going into the outside. Uh, I know when you have a blood issue, you're not supposed to go outside. That was part of the law of the Old Testament. Uh, but she said, I'm willing to, to break my tradition uh, because I got faith in Jesus. Uh, and I heard about how he already changed water into wine. Uh, I heard uh, how he's already walked on water to get the disciples out of the storm. Uh, I heard uh, how he raised uh, Jazerah's uh, daughter. Uh, and I've got, uh, now I'm, I'm confident. Uh, and I know if I can make my way, uh, I got to weave in and out. Uh, and every once in a while, I got to drop to my knees. Uh, because you got to understand, I'm weak because I've been hemorrhaging uh, but she said I got into the crowd uh, and some people tried to kick me but that didn't stop me uh, and some people tried to elbow me but that didn't stop me uh, and then finally I got close enough to Jesus uh, and all I had strength enough to do uh, was to lean uh, to lean on uh, and when I touched him uh, of his garment uh, I found that there was something uh, I could not explain uh, there was something uh, that Jesus came and did she said at that point my blood stopped flowing uh, somebody say praise the Lord uh, somebody say praise the Lord uh, won't he do it uh, won't he do it uh, somebody say won't he do it uh, He'll do it. The only question now is, will you do it? Will you ask God for the faith to make Jesus smile? Because it ain't about you anyway. 
If you let the Lord work in you, you'll be all that God has called you to be. But it always starts off with your testimony. It starts off with your confession of faith. Listen, if you're here today, you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and King. If you're here today and you want to be baptized, if you're in Facebook and you're saying, Preacher, I heard you today, I need your help. I'm inviting you to come right now. If you are on Facebook, call that number 704-455-2763. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you're looking to be baptized, or if you're here in the sanctuary, you need a church home, or if you just need somebody who will speak into your life, this is your time now. The door of the church are open. Would you please stand? The door of the church are open right now. Please stand wherever you are. He says, come and let me smile on you. He says, I want you to have faith that will make Jesus proud. And I know the Lord would say, if you would just step forward and say, I need the Lord right now. I don't know how I'm going to fix my situation, but I know the Lord can because I got faith. I got real faith. If you're here today, please come, please come, please come. If you're here today, please come just as you are. If you're in Facebook land, call that number. Let the Lord have it today. Let the Lord do what he does. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you for doing it right now, God. Thank you now. Praise, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the choir continue to sing real quiet, real soft. We're going we're gonna to give a prayer today. This is a prayer for the altar call, whoever is here today. If you came because you have a need, I want you to know, let's connect with faith, the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and let him know that you want that kind of faith, that he can smile in you. Would you bow your heads now, God? We thank you. We trust you. We honor you, God. We ask now that you would touch every person, whatever situation that they're going through, marriage, dealing with children, work, whatever it might be, husband, wife, whatever the thing might be, financial. God, we're putting it in your hands right now. And we'll believe in your word that says that all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, they are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, do what you do. Strengthen, give us peace. Give us love. Give us joy. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated. As we think about God smiling on us, we're ready to go into communion. God says, I want to smile on you today. He says, I want to use communion time as a time to smile upon you. So we ask those on Facebook if you would... Go ahead and get your bread and get your juice. And we're about ready to partake in this time of communion. Thank God for Jesus who came to this earth to be our sacrificial lamb. Thank God for Jesus says, I'm willing to die on the cross for your sins. Thank God for Jesus. Who says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And so we're thankful today as we prepare for communion. If you could kind of get your bread and your wine and we're ready. Keep, keep on, keep on, keep on with that. God has smiled down upon me. The Lord says here, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. For I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth the fruit of the vine until I drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. 
Let us have a prayer over this communion. Lord, we thank you <clears throat> for this first Sunday, the time that we've set aside to remember the great work of God who loved us so much that he gave his son, Jesus. And remember Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life. And so we thank you, God, as we remember your great work. So now, God, bless all of the people here today and those who are at home in very different places. As we come together around this communion table, we ask you to forgive us of all the sins we have committed. We know that we have maybe sinned knowing or not knowing, but we ask your forgiveness. And we ask God that if we take this communion, let it be strengthened to our bodies and our souls. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you. Now take and eat this and remember that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us eat it together. Jesus said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is shared for many. Now drink this and remember that Christ died for you and be thankful. Let us drink it together. Let us pray again. Lord, we thank you again for communion. Thank you for doing your great work in us. Now bless us, God, and keep us. Keep us in fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Keep us in fellowship with you, God. Help us to love ourselves so that we can love our neighbors, that we can love you. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, one thing I failed to mention, I, I didn't say if you needed a cup. And if anybody needs a cup, it's okay. Just raise your hand right now. We can still have you. If anybody here needs a cup, you don't have a cup. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Amen. We're now ready to close out this service. We want to say thank you again for coming. Again, we say to Facebook and all and teleconference, thanks for connecting with us. Now let us please stand for the prayer and the benediction. Thank you so much for coming, and please come again. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, God. Help us to have that faith that will make Jesus smile. And Jesus, when you smile in us, we can smile with other people. Now we ask that you would give us a faith that is real, a faith that is genuine, because our faith is going to be on your word. We're going to hang everything we believe on you and your word. So we thank you now, God, and bless us and keep us and bless every family, bless every man and woman, boy and girl, bless all of those who are leaders of their families. Keep them strong, God, and keep them blessed. We want you to know that we love you and we adore you. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and dominion, power and honor, both now and forever. Everybody say amen. May the blessed Lord be with you and go in peace.